Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to teach you how to create a glass orb or a crystal ball over an object. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how I've done that. I have these pages and then I have three layers above them. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key down. I'm going to turn all the layers off and turn them invisible for a second so that I can show you that I started off with this image. Now if you don't have an image like this, you can do a Google search or you could go over to Creative Commons on Flickr. And last but not least, you could go over to the uh, Microsoft Clip Art, which is where I got this. I'm going to put these back one by one each layer. This is the sphere. This is the reflection. And this is the shadow. Now I'm going to teach you how to do all of those. Now I'm going to go once again, hold the Alt or Option key, click on the background layer and make everything disappear again. Now I have the rectangular or actually the elliptical marquee tool chosen right now and I have a specific width and height. You will have to adjust this on your image because when I click on it this is about what size orb or what size sphere I would like. Now I'm going to uh, move that right here. I'm going to move that one by using the arrow keys and I'm going to place that approximately where I would like that. And I kind of like it somewhere over here. That's kind of nice. And then I'm going to press Command J or Control J and that's going to make whatever was in the marching ants copy onto a new layer. If I hold the Command key down and click on the little icon in layer 4, you can see the marching ants reappear. Now that's going to be kind of important because we're going to go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. We're going to leave this at 100 and select OK. And as you can see, that kind of gives us that crystal ball effect that I have right here. I'm going to hit Control D, make the marching ants go away. And as you can see, it's starting to look really good now. The next thing I need to do is I need to go to my layers palette, go down to the bottom where there's the little dog ear icon. I'm going to click on that and create a new layer above that particular layer. And then I'm going to give it some shine to make it look like it's glass. Now remember I told you I created an elliptical marquee of a certain size. We need to go back to the rectangular marquee and we need to make it the same size. Now yours might differ from mine. I'm going to go ahead and click it and then I need to go and I need to put the square right above where the circle is so that it matches up perfectly. Each edge of the circle matches up with each edge of the square. Then using the default palettes, if you don't have them, you can click D on your keyboard and then picking the paint bucket tool you can click inside the square and then it will turn this black. On the right hand side you can see that you have a black square on a new layer. Now we're going to go over to filter we're going to render and we're going to render a lens flare. The type that you want is 105 prime you can move this around by grabbing the little plus sign over here and just kind of moving this around wherever you need to go. Now I'm going to add mine kind of in the corner up here and then you have a little bit of lens flare over here which is going to help it give it that glass look. Then you're going to select OK and that looks nice doesn't it? But it doesn't look very realistic. So next thing we need to do is we need to go over to filter and then we need to distort this and this time instead of picking sphere eyes we need to go to where it says polar coordinates and what that's going to do is it's going to swap it around and give it that orbish look to it and there we go now the only problem is is that this orb doesn't look too real because it's got a line straight down the center of this now how I've solved this is I've gone over to the smudge tool and then I've picked a fairly nice size brush and I've just put it over the where the line is located and I've grabbed it and just kind of smudged it over to the right and that kind of gives it that ball effect. Now I can go ahead now and hit command or control D it'll make the marching ants go away. Now the only problem is is that 
this is all black and all I really care about is the shine. So what I can do now is change the blending mode. As a default it is a normal blending mode and I'm going to select this and choose linear dodge. And there we go. And as you can see you're starting to get a few little, let me turn this into a move tool, you can see a little bit of shine on this particular uh, ball or this globe now. Okay, so we now that we have that, it's starting to look very nice. Now the only thing I need to do is I need to change this into a circle because we're going to add this as a reflection or a shadow that goes down here. And I need this to be a circle. So how do I do that? Well, I hold the command key down and I click on the place that I know is a circle. That would be the thumbnail of my second layer. I click on it and as you can see the round circle comes back with the marching ants. Now we're going to use a layer mask on this particular layer 5 or we could hit command shift I that will select everything on the outside of this and we can hit delete. Let's go ahead and take a look at that thumbnail now. It's a round thumbnail. That's pretty cool. Let's get rid of the marching ants by doing a command or a control D and we're almost there. Now we need to duplicate this letter, layer right here. I'm going to use a command J and that's going to duplicate this layer. But as you can see it's starting to really burn in that shine. It's becoming a little annoying actually. So I'm going to take this opacity down and track this down to about 50 some percent, maybe just right at 50 percent. And I'm going to change the blending mode. I'm going to change that to soft light. Now it kind of gives it a yellowish look to it. That's okay because we're going to change and make this our shadow. Let's go ahead and hit Control or Command T. What that will do is it will give us the little box that goes around for transforming our particular image or our shape. If you hold the command or control key down you can grab each one of the corners and you can move it and skew it however you need. So I'm going to go ahead and skew this a little bit as if it's a three-dimensional image here. Go ahead and skew this just a little bit more there. And then I'm going to actually move it as if the shadow is coming off of here. Might even twist this around just a little bit to give it that look as if it's coming from the bottom of the globe or the orb. Kind of right there. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now, this doesn't look like a very realistic shadow, so we need to go in and we do need to give it a little bit of a blur. You guessed it, the Gaussian blur is coming up. So hit filter, go to blur, and let's hit it with some Gaussian blur. I don't need that much there, but I do need just a little bit just so that I can have some shape to it. I just put 7.6 there, and that's fine. Now the next thing that I need to do once I have this blur in here is I need to give it because you're looking through the actual orb here it's going to distort this particular shadow underneath. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hold the command key once again click our layer to give that round area or the marching ants in a circle form and then I'm going to go back to filter I'm going to go to distort and I need to spherize this particular shadow and then to 100 percent and select OK. So now what I'm doing is I'm spherizing this particular shadow. The shadow on the page is not being affected by this particular sphere but the shadow that's underneath the globe would be affected. I'm going to hit command D and there we have it we have the 
sphere or the globe that's right here and we have a little shadow. Go ahead and hit the Alt or the Option key, click on there. There's our original file right there. There is our sphere. There is the shine that makes it look like an orb. And last but not least, there is a shadow. My name's Chucky. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a couple thumbs up. Cheers!